News for at least your most authoritative news analysis show. And some of the messages coming in, and uh, <laughs> Niado says that I thought the AG was simply uh, to insisting on the procedure and capacity and also seeking to negotiate with Wayomi in good faith without a gun to his head. I think we ought to be fair to her. Then, okay, if your message is just about attacking a person on this show, I will not read it. It doesn't matter that um, it sounds like it is, uh, it is seeking to vindicate anyone here. I will not read it. Um, so those of you writing about somebody else and um, forget it. Okay, too many of those messages in now. So what should I do? <laughs> um, that's what the money got. We are good Chassu. friends. So we are very good very, friends. Very, very good friends. <laughs> Way back. Okay. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we should proceed to the Electoral Commission straight away. And in respect of the Electoral Commission, I start with you, Doc. The Electoral Commission, after the Supreme Court gave a decision, and the Supreme Court gave very straightforward orders, and the orders were that it should allow the disqualified aspirants the opportunity to, let me read them. It says, number one, it should extend the nomination period from Monday, the 7th to November, um, to Tuesday, the 8th of November, and that he should invite, he should invite all the interested party and all other presidential candidates who were able to submit their nomination papers by the close of the nomination day of 30th September 2016 and were disqualified without a hearing and give them a hearing within the extended period. Number three, order three, that in appropriate cases, it should afford those candidates the opportunity to comply with Regulation 9.2. Regulation 9.2 says make corrections, make, uh, um, make cancellations. Then, finally, to consequent to the above directive, we find it necessary and expedient to make a further order to stay all court proceedings pending in the various high courts against the applicants by some of the disqualified presidential <coughs> candidates on the same issue of having been denied a hearing to enable the EC to carry out its mandate in line with these orders. So they ordered, and the EC gave them the opportunity the next day, except that their complaint was that the next day, Dr. Papa Kusindum, who had only two <laughs> issues to deal with, had the 105. Mm -hmm. Others had so many, they couldn't uh, manage. Then somehow, in the end, um, when they declared that these are the people who have uh, qualified, they disqualified six of them. So here we are. Okay. How do you say about all of that process? Well, okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad that at least the Supreme Court ruling brought some form of finality to the lawsuits that were being waged at the EC. Um, but I found, I think that, you know, the EC complied, yes, obviously they, they, they did. But it's almost like, you know, when you have um, almost like a petulant child, mm. yeah, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do it in my way. And that's how I felt because I think that, you know, um, from the EC saying, okay, um, from the Supreme Court saying, okay, let's <coughs> extend the nomination period to allow to rectify the mistakes that were that that, that was a basis for which mm. these um, um, presidential aspirants were not allowed to contest, and then two mistakes, three mistakes, jumps like hundredfold or you know or more, which to most of us was quite shocking because it raises many, many, many questions. Such as? Such as, are you saying that initially you didn't do your due diligence? So these mistakes, That's you, a didn't, legitimate question. you didn't realize these before. So if that is the case, then you didn't realize them before. How do I know that the people that were previously approved didn't also have similar mistakes on their forms and you've approved them? Oh, but, and then if, that wasn't the case you 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 knew of these um, errors before then why weren't they mentioned and when when you were giving reasons for them not being able to um, go through and to contest why were these reasons not given so I think you know the, the important thing about the Commission is that the, the integrity the confidence we have in the Commission that they're able to do their job to execute their mandate fairly 
to close us sour free fair elections and I, I i am one of the people who think that okay if you're going to contest for a presidential to be to, the, to run the affairs of this country to be a president of course you've got to do your due diligence i don't think anybody will say you wouldn't however also as a commission for us to have faith in you you've also got to execute your job properly and ensure that you know we understand these things so i don't know i mean the questions that i've asked I don't have any answers to and it's not I think sometimes when those of us ask questions about the Commission as a whole it shouldn't be seen as being antagonistic I mean how are you expected to have um, faith in an institution mm. that I, I had asked the question earlier mm. that it sounds as though from the criticism that the Commission has received <coughs> Ghanaians wanted the Commission to approve all the candidates. I, do, I, don't get, I don't get those sentiments at mm. all. I think that it's not, it shouldn't just be a rubber stamp institution. Okay. That if there's legitimate reasons why candidates shouldn't be allowed to go forward, then mm. fine. But I think it's the judgment that people were wondering. And if the question doesn't necessarily mean you're against it, doesn't mean you're anti I think we need to remove this from our general perception. Okay. It's just asking, <laughs> yes, it's just asking <coughs> questions like I have done now. And I think that the, um, the commission throwing up all of these new found, newly discovered errors, I think undermined itself a bit, especially when we didn't get any explanation as to how they suddenly appeared. I know Kukubako had some disappointments with the judgments. Share well, with us. See, um, as for those new errors that won F, after all, there was an extension of the nomination period <laughs> by the uh, <laughs> Supreme Court. So it was a legitimate exercise. And apparently they were raised not to tell them that, look, without this, we can't go forward. Do in your own interest, correct them. Assuming one day somebody wants to challenge your legitimacy and all those things. And in any case, wasn't it interesting that they were able to resolve those things? Mm -hmm. PPP within a matter of 24 right. hours mm -hmm. dealt with the 80 or so mm -hmm. errors. Shows something, lack of due diligence in the initial stage. Uh, the focus shifted. Mm -hmm. I think going to the Supreme Court was strategic. Mm -hmm. And it helped to truncate all this uh, guerrilla warfare type uh, strategy that had been adopted by some of the disqualified candidates. They were going in rips and drops, <laughs> so that <laughs> knowing that there will be a domino effect. Are you guys still no. going to court? I'm not dignifying it. your intervention with any comment. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to that specific issue, I have no comment. <laughs> you don't know what I did. I was deliberate. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you see, something happened. I had a little difficulty. Mm. What the error, what is an error? And which error is subject to correction? We still yeah. have a gray area there. But I still get a sense that, look, indirectly, we are now being told mm. that the EC has a mandate to disqualify mm -hmm. based on its appreciation of something. Yes. Yes. That, these are very interesting things that are coming up. You know, but what kind of error? You know, I didn't want to dignify, and so I'm constrained. But if you had a situation where somebody, uh, two subscribers for party A, are found on the forms of party B, now the two subscribers produce statutory declarations to the effect that we did it for party B. Mm. Indeed, they were produced also at the EC mm. to come and reinforce their statutory declaration. It turns out that the two names that were found on party A's forms, they didn't put it there. It's the party itself that put it there. Now, that's an error that you should be allowed to come and cure. I mean, we got to look, take another look, perhaps at the CI itself, which says that give them opportunity to come and correct er errors. So the rules of natural justice weighed in favor mm. of the disqualified aspirants. Maybe that's a lesson that EC2 will take on board, that next time, just give them the chance let them come and cure their issues before you take a decision. We've all learned our lessons right. in these things. You know, but basically, uh, seven, fair deal, let's have the seven to run. There's, there's a comment by the EC that's attracting a lot of uh, discussion. Michael Quay has written on it. 
uh, that it will be illegal and constitutional that the EC was in Chatham House and suggested that if the results became so close in the presidential, uh, you pause and do a recount. I think you, that you the, may pause and do a recount. Well, if it's made, then why are we agitating? So but I would request pause. that the EC doesn't do that. You see, we should introduce new things. I'm sure it's coming out of good intentions, but if it, it, it cannot have a consensus, it's obvious that this can trigger all sorts of controversies. If I were in the shoes of the EC or if I were to advise them, I think they dis dis discard that. In 2012, didn't the MPP make such a request? For a recount, for a recount. But you see, if it's so, that's legitimate. The recount it comes from the an aggrieved party. Mm. But in this case, we are being told that it's the referee who will pause and do a recount because it's too close. How close? I don't get it. But the law leaves the discretion. One. If you make the request, the law leaves the discretion to the returning Yes, officer. so let the aggrieved party, we still must go by that uh, uh, approach. Where the referee self decides that look here is too close. How close? I don't get it. The, I law, have a little, the law doesn't prohibit the referee from initiating it. If I were the referee, I wouldn't do it. Okay. Especially when you see the That's signals. A lot of people are making all sorts of controversial statements. Mm. Don't give them the ammunition to do anything post-election uh, or during the course of counting. I think that the EC should stick the standard practice. Okay. We, we have places just close by us where <laughs> they are getting, the country is, in, is exploded over some of these matters. If the EC makes that suggestion, what's so wrong about it? Well, um, I want to deal with this thing in its entirety to a certain extent. Now, now let's, let's look at the issue of recount. Let's go quickly to Regulation 38 okay. of CI 94. Mm -hmm. Let us look at subsection 4 and 5. Now, the 4 says, a candidate or representative of a candidate or a counting agent may, if present, rather request, the request for recount. Mm -hmm. 5. The presiding officer, or in this case, the EC, if it's a presidential, well, who will be the returning officer in that case, may refuse to comply with the request. So, in fact, by law, the EC cannot call for the recount. This so, one says, this one says, that agent may, okay? Oh, they may refuse. May, may, may make the, the request. No, no, no. Mm. It, listen. It says, for... Mm -hmm. A candidate or so so and so or and so a representative and so, yes. of a candidate Whenever. or a count yes or, or a counting agent yes or a counting agent yes. may yes if no, present may, if present when the counting of the ballot you. is completed so they may do it the presiding officer Thank you. but too. the presiding officer may not ask for a recount mm. so the, no it doesn't say so no 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 but it doesn't say they can silence mm -hmm. it doesn't say they may yeah, that's what I mean it's silence uh -huh, but it doesn't say too that wait hold on hold on hold on <laughs> let's get the law right. okay. And this one is good that two of us lawyers here. Lawyers. No, our viewers and listeners. Oh, yeah, no, it's good. Mm. No, no, I'm saying that okay, go ahead. It, it, they also understand from go us. Ahead, go ahead. Regulation 38.4. It says that two people who can do that, or the various people, is who a candidate, do. yes, mm. or a representative of the candidate, or the counting agent, that's still of a candidate. That's, for example, the counting agent. And yes. So the EC does not qualify whether it's close or not to call for a recount. That's the point I want to make. What they may do is refuse to comply in five with the request to count the ballot. Mm. Okay. Right here in black and white. We, we've run out of time, so yeah. yes, uh, let's hear oh, money on that. Okay, okay quickly, do no, no, 30 it's seconds. Okay, it's go okay. ahead, go ahead. Because I was going to even go, go, go further go, go, into go further. what mm. guides the Electoral Commission like the Bible, mm. which is the handbook on electoral management design, and the various principles that the EC must stick to. But since you say there's no time, next time we'll come and do the rest of this that. Let Omani Boma also yeah. Yeah. Okay. talk. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I think that um, to a very large extent, the EC should as much as possible, maybe going forward, speak less, engage more at the level of IPAC. I'm not saying they are not engaging. More at the level of IPAC. Say that when these issues are coming 
out. The people go to IPAC and as they come back and they give us political tainted views of the but issues. The issue should be speaking to all of us. No, no, but at least if at the end of the IPAC meetings, key decisions are taken, it can even com be converted into a communique or some understandings reached. Mm. I must also say that I listened to it, I think, on um, Top Story. Mm. The intro was dropped like a bomb. <laughs> but when I heard her voice, it was lower like than the kind of intro that was given. And that might also <coughs> uh, have incensed the kind of uh, sentiments that we had. So we need to have a balance between reporting what is said and all. Be that as it may, we welcome all the three that uh, found their way on the ballot. If you recall, two weeks ago when I was here, I urged they said that as much as possible if mm. they can accommodate them, why not? But President Mahama this week wrote to the good people of Ghana. He's very confident about winning the election. He's campaigning today in the Tema areas. Yesterday, he commissioned two community day schools, mm. commissioned a good refinery to create more jobs, to educate the youth. <laughs> <laughs> Several rules are When you finish, you would also seek permission to tell us where Nanado is today. Nanado <laughs> 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 jobs. I'll seek permission to say that. Nanado will collect the money so, for us. That's so we are very... Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's him talk. Nanado has actually, actually, actually has a actually there are those who are sending cannot. messages <laughs> who are saying that <laughs> they wish that if it happened that Nanado won, he should make Martin Amidu the first attorney general. Uh, Martin interesting Amidu, comments. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, this is just a comment. Let him go. Ah, okay. Okay. Then he should be the Nanado independent prosecutor. That's if he wins. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, the CIs and everything that we are reading, the, the most important portions of all of these and all the electoral laws in Ghana that we are going to use for the elections and particularly after the elections. Uh, when we are going to have disputes, how it should be resolved, mm -hmm. have been put together in this nice book is uh, the Manual on Election Adjudication in Ghana. This is a third edition. It's done by the Chief Justice or the Judicial mm -hmm. Service of the Republic of Ghana. Yes, uh, uh, with Danida. And this is going to be launched. Uh, I'm sure Kuku will is get his copy. Sale? This is going to be launched on the on Wednesday. Is it at on two for sale too? They'll sell uh, it. It's not for sale. You should get your copy shortly. Okay. I should. I, like I should be able to. Uh, yeah. And, and, and this is going <laughs> to be launched on, on Wednesday at 2 p.m. at the Accra International <laughs> Conference Center. Start with <laughs> potential strike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the right. I was talking about yeah, that we have okay. the international equivalent. Okay, need okay. Like this to guide us. So my guests have been Dr. Edward Omani <laughs> Buama, who has... Um, <laughs> been very busy <laughs> watching Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Be, be <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Very He's giving me the, the judgment he has procured for October. <laughs> so I'll very read very it. To the and then <laughs> Michael Quay Jr. is a lawyer and also a spokesperson for the NPP campaign, uh, communications person for the NPP campaign. Dr. Jimai Manunu is acting director, Center for Management Development at GIMPA. Um, Kweku Bako Jr. is the editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini, and my outfit, as always, is supplied by Latida. Have a good afternoon.